Okay, we're here at the column, and now we're interviewing Tony Award winner, Leah Salonga. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Now, upon doing my research on you, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but have you heard of the term EGOT? No. EGOT means a person or a star who has won the Emmy, the Golden Globe, the Oscar, and the Tony. Right. In the theater Broadway circle, it is the trifecta mm -hmm. of a performer that can win the drama desk, the critic, outer, outer critic, critic circle. Tony, the theater world. Right. Did you know that you are a handful of female stars of Broadway that have ever done that in one Wow, season? really? Yeah. Oh my, yeah. awesome. So That's pretty awesome. Congratulations. Thank I mean, you. You're in that rare elite group of people that have <laughs> won all that in one season. Yeah, the thing is with the Theater World Award, you can only get it when you're debuting. Debuting, yeah. Um, so if you're a, re a seasoned performer that gets to win out of Critics Drama Desk and the Tony, you, it's possible to do that, but if you have already debuted on Broadway previously, then you can't get the Theater World Award, which is, which is un unless you get that for your debut years, years previously. Yeah. When I watch the telecasts, like we all theater freaks do, <laughs> um, on the Tony telecast, you look so beautiful. Thank and you. So, you look so adorable. I was so young. You were so, oh, oh I, uh, my Botox. Um, when you won, who was sitting next to you? My brother. Your brother. He, I don't know why this stays in my memory. And honestly, I still have, I still remember this image. When you won, he really pounded your back. I know. <laughs> I had so many people asking me the day after, because there were a lot of people that saw it in the Philippines as well, which is where I'm originally uh -huh. from. And I got phone calls and it was, congratulations, is your back okay? Yeah. I was like, why? What happened? Said, no, because Gerard, who's my brother, he was like, he was like smacking you on the back. And, and the thing is, I, at the time, I didn't feel anything. I guess I was just so pumped up with yeah. adrenaline. And it wasn't until I we videotaped, back then before the days of TiVo, uh -huh. we videotaped the, the telecast and we watched it back. And I'm like, <laughs> it does. That looked like it hurt. It did. It looked out. It looked on camera. It was like, oh, what did she start? Because when you went to stand, to accept your award, you kind of took a breather. Like, there's my back. There's my back. No, didn't even realize anything was happening. And I, w I have to uh, confess to you, and this is totally the on honest truth. Um, I have the DVD of the 25th anniversary of Lemons at All, right. um, which was filmed live um, at O2 at in, London. in London. And there are two numbers that I watch over and over and over again, which is Bring Him Home and yours, um, I Dream a Dream. I've seen that production, be, I saw it on Broadway, I've seen it on tour so many times. It just recently came through Dallas right. again. And still, I mean, I've never heard it sung the way you did it that night on the, on the DVD. And thank God they captured that. You've, I, I don't know if you, if you remember, but you got such a long applause after that number. It was just, because I mean, I was, I was at home watching just bawling. It was, <laughs> your interpretation of the lyrics, I think is what was so moving. And the way your soprano voice glided effortlessly right into those high notes. Because most of the past um, actors who've seen play that role, they tend to, you know, do like a, a, a step on each note to get to that top one. Mm -hmm. Yet you just glided like you were on butter. <laughs> Thank you. So, what was it like singing that that number that night and getting that response from the audience? Well, I I have to first give acknowledgement to one of my friends who had previously done Fontaine in, in the Philippines in a production in, of, of Lehman's over there, and I went to her um, when I got the role of Fontaine on Broadway. You know, I, I gave her a call or I sent her, an, sent her an email saying, "What do I do?" So I'm going to be doing this for real. What do I do? She's like, just read the book. Read the Fontaine passages in from the novel. I dreamed a dream will never be the same after that. So I, my husband's in bed and he's fast asleep and I tend to stay up at night. So I'm reading and it's available pretty much anywhere on the internet. You don't have to buy the book. It's on it's, it's public domain. So I was reading just Fontaine, just who she is, where she comes from the circumstances she finds herself in, you will cry reading this. And and I'm like, this is one of the greatest pieces of literature, and I'm just sobbing like a, a baby. And so my husband wakes up, and he's like, honey, are you okay? And in my, in my head, I'm thinking, how on earth am I going to do this every night? Sing this song, knowing all this, knowing having all of this information and all this backstory on this character. How am I going to do it? 
and well, thank goodness rehearsals help. <laughs> and you know, being amongst a group of people that are incredibly funny in person, as in every member of the cast has a wicked sense of humor, and and we all get together for poker games in between shows and that kind of thing. And I think that that was one thing that saved my head from going into that deep dark place that a lot of people can get into doing a role like that. So there was a lot of levity backstage, which could enable me then to do dark stuff and ugly stuff on stage. And I have to also give credit to the associate director um, who was working with me. Um, he had, we had worked together in the past on Les Mis in London um, because he, he put me into the show over there when I did Epony many, many years previously. Um, he was doing and kind of maintaining the show in the U.S. So he sat me down and said, what you're doing is pretty good, but I'm just going to tell you this, don't be afraid to get ugly with this character. And so it was incredibly liberating hearing that direction from him. And so just, I just kept on pushing, pushing and pushing things and sure I'd get notes to pull stuff back, but for the most part I just kept seeing how ugly this, this woman could get. And there really is no bottom limit to this woman. So, so when I when I now going to the O2, I had had eight months of doing Fontaine on Broadway in my body, and so when the time came to do it in the concert, I didn't have to think too much. I just remembered the passages from the book and remember and kept all that as vivid in my head as I could, especially in a room where you're singing to fifty. Oh my god, I know. It was just that, the way the it seems on the DVD. It's mind blowing. You, um, you were, of course, in Miss Saigon, mm -hmm. which again was another difficult crazy. arc of a character. They were, they were sadistic. Bless your heart. The character arc you had to go from there. Flower Drum Song, mm -hmm. which I thought you were wonderful in. Thank you. Beautiful performance. And then, of course, Les Mis. You, you are the first Asian to play both Fontaine and Ebony. Well, I was the first Asian to play Ebony. I think the first person who ever did the show uh, at all. Um, but there have been Filipino women that have played Fontaine before I got to it. Oh. Um, but on Broadway, probably the first one. But there was somebody in the West End, and then there was somebody on the tour. You are the first on the Broadway. I didn't yeah. back. As we are fellow actors of, of color and, and different race. Right. What is your personal opinions on non-traditional casting and the issues with non-traditional yeah. casting? And I'll just be honest and frank Please about do. everything. Um, there are times when it actually does work. I mean, in a, in a show like Les Mis, where they're, where everybody's pretty much on an even playing field, you can play around with casting and you cast on merit. It does not work though if, if the show is very specific with regards to race and racial issues. I mean, I'm, I'm now working on a show called Allegiance, and it's about Japanese Americans that are inter that were interned in World War II. So that's the story I'm doing. And because there is, it's it's there are white characters or Japanese characters. So here it has to be absolutely specific that you have to get um, Asian actors to play the Japanese characters and Caucasians to play obviously the Caucasian characters because there is a romance in the show that's interracial so if it's a, if it's non-traditional casting it may not be as potent so it really depends I mean things like um, showboat things like Porgy and Bess um, anything where there is a very explicit um, racial story being told, then you really have to be racially correct. But if it's if it's everybody's pretty much on the playing field and there's no mention of race, there is no mention of you know anybody being on a you know on an uneven playing field, then you can play around with casting and then you cast based on who can sing the stuff really, really well. So a, a show like Les Mis, you can cast it non traditionally. You can we've had a black Javert, you've had, yeah. you know, East Asian people or South Asian people in the ensemble. You'll have African Americans, you'll have Filipinos, you'll have Chinese or Korean or whatever in one company. And it totally works because it's not a racially, it's not a racially specific, specific. show. Um, so it works with that. It would work probably in a show like My Fair Lady. It, it, because it's about the girl's tongue 
and transforming this this girl that sells flowers in Covent Garden, you know, into basically turning a sow's ear into a soul. You did great in that. I did it in the Philippines. Did you? I, I, I've actually and you were so sandy. You were sandy in Greece in the Philippines. Yes, yes, I've done. Sonia, they're playing our song. And the nice thing about doing stuff in the Philippines, being a Filipino, is that because there is never really a mention of it, it, it's not about race because everybody in, you presume that everybody that's going to be cast is Filipino, therefore Asian. So you really can play around with casting. Okay. Yeah, but right. yeah, well, but I've, I've been able to do a nice cachet of characters in my homeland because. Well, there's no such thing as minority. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Well, thank you, Leah, so much. I, I'll break a leg Friday night. Thank I'll you. be there Absolutely. cheering you on. Thank you. Come see Leah Salonga, Terrence Mann, Brian Silk Mitchell. Friday night at the American Airlines Center for Do You Hear the People Sing and much success. What a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Same thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you.